Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we just had news drop that there's a new champion coming to Raid. You might have just seen her in the Call of the Arbiter video, uh, like the, the recent episode that just went out. I'm recording this before I've even seen the episode, um, but it's actually the champion we all thought was Kayuku in the previous kind of like clips that we've seen. So this is the champion. She's coming to Raid. Uh, literally right now. I think she's going to be dropping as soon as the Call of the Arbiter video launches. Take a little look. Samurai. She's blind. I don't know why. I just love the idea of the blind samurai. It's almost like I'm so skilled. I'm chopping you up even though I can't see what the hell is going on. Full visual as ever. Okay, looking good. Looking good. Right. Let's see what she is all about. I guess let's read Raid's kind of blurb about what she can do. Call of the Arbiter Tatsu is what they're kind of leading this one with. Okay, so firstly, this is not a fusion. This is a champion who can be obtained, I guess, through shards down the line. But there's going to be a champion development tournament going live, which, is be, which will be where you can actually get her. As long as you are level 51 and above, then she will be in your bracket but you have to come first. So it's like going to probably be a one in a hundred chance. Uh, I will do a video on like how to smash these events. Yeah, I'll probably drop it tomorrow unless this literally goes live straight away. We don't, I don't know exactly when it's going live. Let me see if, if I've got that exact info. Tatsu will appear in the game right after episode six of Call of the Arbiter. The players uh, level 51 and above will get a chance to get this champion for first place in their bracket. Um, in the champion development tournament that starts shortly. Shortly. I don't know when that means. Is that today? Could well be today. Um, maybe I'll cover that then in this video. Towards the end of this video, let's talk about how to get points quickly. Um, but yeah, it is... They're always tough, firstly, right? To come first in any tournament, it's all rel relative to who you're up against. I did this once for Krisk, and I've got to say, it was tough. Like, it was a week-long tournament. I barely slept all week. I was grinding champions all week long. It was hard. Yeah, really hard. I had one other uh, dude that was super up for Chris as well. Constant was his name. And we were constantly battling it out. And if you've not seen that series because you're newer to Raid, you should go back and check the series of me trying to get Chris in this champion training tournament. Uh, perhaps I'll pin a couple of the videos at the end or down in a, a comment. But it was intense. I've got to say that. So let's go through what she's all about. Shadowkin, legendary, attack-based champion, force affinity. Raid have got to say this. Tatsu's place is to shine in the arena in all its variations, classic, tag, and live. She can be used either way as a damage dealer or a debuffer. Um, the latter case might require you to pair her up with another damage dealer. Yeah, okay. She's bringing all sorts of debuffs. Um... She will behave like, this is interesting, Tatsu's passive skill makes her immune to sleep. Therefore, she is good against some of the meta champions like uh, Sifi and Kaima. Okay, that's interesting. We'll check that out in a minute. Uh, okay, cool. So that's Raid's, Raid's blurb, Raid's view. My initial thought, before I've seen, I haven't even looked at a kit, by the way. I promise that. I've not seen a kit. But my, my initial thought is, if she's a debuffer, and they're saying she's ripe for the arena meta. They still haven't really done anything about Polymorph being, you know, like chosen by everybody in high level meta. Which means that debuffers are just not getting a look in. Madame Sari, she's not in the meta anymore. Romantu, people like, you know, go after Romantu, not in the meta anymore, uh, etc. Like these champions don't get a look in because they're just getting wrecked by Polymorph. Okay, and that's still happening. And that will still happen after the changes that they're planning. Anyway, let's go through this. Transferent Slash. So A1, double hitter. Each hit transfers a random debuff from this champion to a target. Random debuff from her to a target. Okay. And then each hit. I mean, that's kind of nuts. That's straight up just like throwing two debuffs out there if you've got accuracy. It's not like a chance to do it. It's just doing it. I like it. Uh, fills this champion's turn meter by 5% for each transfer debuff. Probably makes her pretty awkward if you're doing like specific speed tuning stuff. Uh, I guess in Clan Boss you would know exactly what's going on. So maybe not as hard in Clan Boss. But um, yeah, a little bit more awkward. But still, getting some turn meter for throwing debuffs at people, not bad. 
Wraith Explosion. Four turn cooldown. Books to three. Books up to 100% here. So attacks all enemies. Puts out decreased resistance. They're really like slamming this decreased resistance out there. And sleep. So decreased resistance for two turns. Sleep for one turn. And she gets a turn meter feel as well. But each debuff place. That's actually quite big. You know, in, in the arena, that's potentially... Eight debuffs, right? So potentially 80% of your turn meter is coming back and you're, t and you're putting people for a nap. That's if Polymorph wasn't out there. Yeah, decreased resistance makes it easier for the rest of your team to land debuffs. But honestly, you shouldn't need more. Like, there's, there's really not much point in more debuffs. The problem with this is the first ability here, decreased resistance, will land. That's where you've got your chance to be Polymorphed first. Then the next one will land. Polymorph again. Like the chances of you actually putting decreased resistance and sleep on a full enemy wave at a high level arena is pretty much zero. Because you just got Polymorph coming at you with every single attempt. Saf made a really good point in a video where he was like, it should just be a, a percentage chance to be polymorphed once. Not per cleanse, per debuff, etc. It just makes it it makes it so crazy makes it so crazy but anyway this skill don't know if it hits hard yet or not we will find out i guess in due time but um certainly an interesting skill if i'm thinking of like my free to play account is it super cool for my free to play if it's a nuke great if it's a, a you know control type of champion i don't know really it is a hundred percent chance to sleep which would be quite good for sand devil the affinity is not good for level 24 or level 7, but you can play different levels. That's fine. Out, elsewhere, outside of the arena, you know, sleep is probably the weakest of the control debuffs and decreased resistance. Albeit it's fine. It's an okay debuff. It means you need less accuracy on your team, but it's certainly not like top of the meta type of debuffs. I'd rather have increased accuracy from a buff than trying to place decreased resistance which could be a weak hit. You know, there's just way more chances of it not going on. So for me, not the best. Depends if, it's, if, depends if it hits really hard. Purgata um, Purgation Blade. Double hitter here on the A3. Books to a four-tone cooldown. Before attacking, removes all debuffs from this champion and steals all buffs from the enemy. It says all buffs. I wonder if that's going to work with Stone Skin. I guess it's still just a 50-50 chance. It's probably still just a 50-50. It's not saying it will happen. Uh, places increased attack and crit damage buff for two turns if they kill someone. <laughs> I don't know. You kind of need the increased attack and crit damage before you hit so that you do kill someone, don't you? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, immune to sleep, which is quite cool, actually. Increases champion's accuracy by 10 and crit damage by 3% for each buff on the enemy team. So I guess you could get a good chunk of accuracy. If you're up against a, a wave of enemies with some buffs on, uh, you might get yourself an extra, what, like 20 or 30 per enemy. Might end up having an extra, you know, 100 odd accuracy. It's quite a lot. And you might end up having an extra, what, 60 odd percent crit damage, which is a lot. But the rest of a kit becomes kind of certainly array 2 becomes kind of irrelevant if they've got a load of buffs chances are they block debuffs which then none of this works because she's not cleaning buffs off before she does this stuff you know kaimar for instance does the sleep but he's cleaning all of the the buffs away before he sleeps so kaimar's straight better in that type of i don't know really i guess a bit of playtesting is going to be needed my initial feelings are not wow look at this champion she's going to be rocking the meta it's just kind of like, you know what, if you pick her up, she might be pretty decent. A bit like really when they did the, the event in a similar way for, um, let's see, let's see. for Altan. Yeah, similar type of thing. I think you could win him from a champion training. He's kind of got these sleep mechanics, but I don't really see him used anywhere. Like Saf got him on his free to play. He does, I don't even think he uses him. So yeah, I'm just... I'm not convinced that this is going to be a crazy champ. But I like that there's a chance to go and win the champion, albeit it's, it's hard. 
So what will it be? It'll be either, an, I guess it's going to be a tournament, it will be a tournament, where it's going to be a champion training tournament. How do you do well in these? Honestly, it's going to be all about developing your champions. So, you know, it, if you get points for this, and we have to see when they come out, but if you get points for things like booking, that's generally a lot of points. Um, so, you know, utilizing those. But the biggest way to earn points on these generally is to take someone from level one of any rank and put some levels into them. Yeah, so even if you're going to use them as food, especially if you're going to use them as food, okay? And depending on the, the star rank is what you do with them. So generally what I would do is take a level one and I would throw one brew, three other dudes into it to make them a level 10, yeah? And then I would just use another level one to level them up because ultimately the level one stuff's just super quick. If you want to be really efficient, you could put a few levels into a level one as well. But you then take your level two and you would feed one brew before you level, before you feed them into someone else. Yeah, this food champion gets a ton of levels, right? One brew. Same type of thing. If you've got your three star, you would feed two brews. Yeah, so you get them to level 15. Even though you're feeding them, you just get so many points for the leveling process. You get more points for the leveling process than you do for the actual upgrading of champions. So anyone you're going to feed, you want to make sure you're pumping brews into before you do the actual feed. Never feed a level one champion is, is kind of the motto here. And that will give you a ton of points. But the fact is, this is quite well known now. Yeah, a level four, I would normally do uh, four brews. Okay, so this is quite well known. So you're going to be up against people doing the same thing. And it's also, you've got a couple of strategies with this type of thing. You either go super hard day one, yeah? Blow the competition away so that they get demoralized and they don't come after you. Or you kind of stay on someone's tail with a load of resources ready to pop. And you have champions just kind of like ready. I think I've probably still got some from previous ones I did. Where I've just got like champions ready. Yeah, all of these are ready to go into. These are food ready to make someone a five star. Look how many I've got. Um, actually, not that many. But I've got, yeah, I do. I've got quite a lot. I thought I'd want that. So I've got quite a lot that are just ready to rank someone up and then I will brew them. And this is what people will do. They will be ready to, some people anyway, will be ready to absolutely burst loads of points. Like that's what's going to happen. So just bear that in mind if you're going to go for this champion. But there you go. Um, what do you think of Tatsu? Is it someone you're keen to go for? Even if you're not doing it on the champion training stuff, would you be keen to get her from a shard? That's, you know, versus other legendaries. Anyway, guys, I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.